Hey there fellow Jujutsu Kaisen fans, it's your boy Toji's personal manko back with another Jujutsu Kaisen video. This time we're going to be looking at Jujutsu Kaisen Shibuya Arc PV. We're going to be doing a scene by scene breakdown of the animation with predictions as to who animated which scene and also talk about the technical aspects of the production. Okay, unretarded for a second. It is quite a bit absurd the number of Jujutsu Kaisen related videos that I've been releasing and will be releasing because after this is gonna come episode 4 analysis, episode 5 analysis and episode 6 analysis. So, there's gonna be Jujutsu Kaisen videos back to back to back to back to back. But hey, I can't help it, alright? I'm like a caveman looking for civilization. I go where the Sakuga is, and right now, all the Sakuga is in Jujutsu Kaisen, so I have no choice. Plus, I also love Jujutsu Kaisen, talking about it, even outside of the animation is a lot of fun. I made an entire video analyzing an episode where I didn't even mention the animation more than in a couple of occasions. So yeah, that's just how my channel is gonna be. Once Jujutsu Kaisen ends and Free Rain comes out, I'm just gonna be non-stop talking about Free Rain then. And yes, Free Rain is also gonna be a game-changing project, but let's just talk about one extremely special generational project at a time. So yeah, let's just stick to Jujutsu Kaisen. As for the animators part of this episode, I do have a lot of guesses, but I also do have like a few confirmations based on the animation technique used so getting right into it this is the very first shot shown in the trailer and it's already from a technical standpoint extremely impressive good looking garbage would be like on the lower end when it comes to priorities in animation but goso just said if my garbage does not have multi-layered shadows and a lot of detail then that's literally garbage or the shit here it's not part of the background, it is part of the foreground. That is to say, an animator had to make Genga for this. So look at the shading on these chips, for example, the cigarettes, the crumbled up piece of paper, and that's so many lines. And the crumbled up piece has so much volume. It goes beyond even, for example, this bottle. This bottle, you can tell, is cylindrical and it has a curvature. This goes beyond even that, because while you can tell that it is voluminous, you can also tell that it has crevices because of the folds. So like it's going in in particular areas like these areas so that's just an incredibly complicated drawing work to make it look three-dimensional the shot looks a lot like the shot that we had in jujutsu kaisen zero and also this as well which is totally fine because jujutsu kaisen zero had pretty good art direction it was not like movie quality level at all from a tv quality level jujutsu kaisen zero did have very good art direction and this feels like it's capturing the same vibe of jujutsu kaisen zero which is very nice because i really did love the atmosphere set in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Combine that with the much more refined look of season two and you get an aesthetic that is incredibly pleasing to the eye. Talking about aesthetic, just look at this drawing. Just look at how beautifully simple yet complicated it is. It is just wonderful and what I'm guessing is a direct Sayaka Koiso correction. Sayaka Koiso being the character designer and the chief animation director, it does not move much. As you can see, it's just mouth flapping animation with the jaw and the, a little bit of the neck muscles moving, but it does not need to move much because it's a very strong drawing and appealing regardless. Nothing like a gradient compositing whatsoever. It's just solid one dimensional colors for each portion. Same with this ghetto, I don't know who this is, drawing, it looks really damn good. And what I'd guess again is a direct Sayaka Koiso drawing. Next is this wonderful Mahito cut. So starting with the background animation. Yeah, uh, it starts off as like very basic backgrounds in the sense that you only have lines to show that it's moving backwards. But then you get organic shapes on top of the ground as well. But as for the animator, I can say with a good level of certainty that this is Kaito Tomioka. Kaito Tomioka being one of the main animators of Jujutsu Kaisen. And the reason I can say that with this level of certainty is just from the effects animation. It looks exactly like Kaito Tomioka's effects. This portion right here. You see these streaks, the way these streaks are drawn that is just pure kaito tomioka action compared to the way these streaks of smokes and the uh, red effects in the background is drawn you can see that the way the streaks of fx animation is drawn is pretty much identical and if you go one step further and look at it in motion the timing is also pretty much exactly the same next we get this wonderful kaiju cut kaiju or mech i think that's mechamaru now that i think about it very impressive that they got a model that is this complicated looking to move now we'll have to obviously wait to see whether there's going to be full 2d or if they are going to be using cgi as well for the foreground animation for season 2 because so far they haven't. Uh, CGI has been entirely restricted to backgrounds for season 2 and even in that case a lot of the backgrounds were still hand animated. As for season 1 the case was the same but uh, a little bit more 3D background animation in the previous season which looked like shit and when it came to the foreground it was just restricted to the usual CGI foreground stuff like vehicles for example. But in season 2 even the vehicles have been 2D which is just ridiculous to think about in a modern production and I do think that it's for the better because in a show with simplistic designs like this one that is like very pop with the colors and stuff cgi just doesn't mix well god damn the youtube compression is awful but hey there's nothing i can do about it it does look 
like a Tanaka correction, but then again, it could just be someone else drawing with a high level of detail. As for the animation, it's incredibly fluid here. The fire animation is animated at once, and Mahito just jumps through the fire with bits of fire on top of him that just blows up in streaks of effects because he's going so fast. Beautifully done. The background here is also hand animated, which is, again, just wonderful. Another really cool explosion cut. I have no idea who this character is, but I guess he has like some sort of cursed doping mechanism. A lot of Jujutsu sorcerers also have like similar looking scars falling Mahito. The perspective shift here is just on point. Like you go up to his face first and then you just cut to his clothing. So I guess that's not one cut actually, it's like two different cuts. Really nice correction work again on Kogisaki's face here. Like the wrinkles between her eyes here just to show her extreme aggression. Not just that, just every character looks good. Panda looks great, Maki looks great, Inumaki of course looks great. And well, yeah, of course, of course she looks great. She has like a piercing over here. Man, that must be so painful, right? Having it here. But I'm done simping for all of the mid characters. It's time to simp for the peak characters. Just a very strong drawing on Ijichi again. A lot of these characters look a lot like Tadashi Hiramatsu's designs, but with a lot of the unnecessary detail removed. And the background here is just the exact same as that as well. This looks a lot like a season one background, but with all of the unnecessary shit removed. It just has the right amount of textures. Also, did you notice how I used the words peak and mid there? That's further proof that I'm actually turning into a mainstream Jujutsu Kaisen channel. Next shot with another new character or... I remember seeing him in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, I think. This drawing on Gojo is also just wonderful. I have no idea how Gojo has gotten hurt here. Because from what we've seen so far, Gojo is like untouchable. Literally. It will be interesting to see how Gege writes tension into Jujutsu Kaisen now because that's something I've been worrying about. Gojo is so OP that there won't be really any tension in the coming arc is what I thought. But looks like Gojo is on his last breath here, uh, quite literally. This is a slight compositing bloom on his eye, so like the light radiating from it to show that his eyes are glowing. As for the detail, it's again, not too much. Just enough detail for the drawing to look like a strong drawing. And now I guess would be the right time to talk about how drawings look like whether they are extremely detailed or not detailed and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'd say this topic falls more into a, like a gray zone. I personally am totally fine with reducing detail if the characters can move a lot more. It might be jarring for some people to see a character be drawn completely differently in two different scenes and that's totally fine. But what is not fine is saying that that is poorly animated or poorly drawn because that's not, that is an objectively wrong statement. The creativity that the animators have with just expressing their style is what has turned the Sakuga industry to the behemoth that it is currently. I don't care if Mob's question mark percent is drawn like this or if Mob's question mark percent is drawn like this. They both look entirely different, but at the end of the day, they are both masterclasses of animation by two extraordinary artists with different styles. And those same artists combined with artists of a similar mindset are the ones who are going to be animating on this season. This arc will get a lot of negative reception from casual fans because of how good the animation is. It happened with Fate Apocrypha episode 22. It even happened with Tanaka's Jujutsu Kaisen episode. Remember how a lot of people were calling Ren Onodera scene CGI? I even remember people saying that some of the faces were poorly drawn and jarring. So at the end of the day, there's no way everyone's going to be happy. But whether you like it or not, this arc is still going to be an animation spectacle of the highest level. This cut again going full on with that philosophy. When I skip frames here, you see a couple of Megumi drawings that you're not ready for. Almost zero detail right there. And then you also see his scalp, which is like pretty much unfinished in terms of the drawing. The drawing before that looks quite good, but again, extremely minimal levels of detail in these drawings. And then you cut to the next scene, which is the strongest drawing of the PV. And yeah, if that does not explain the philosophy of the staff working on this project, I don't know what will. As for the animation in the scene, there are a lot of predictions that this was done by Nakaya Onsen, but I also saw a couple of people say that this was not done by Onsen, and that Onsen himself said that he did not work on Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, particularly with the Sukuna scene, which also was presumed to be Onsen by a lot of people. To me, this still looks very much like Nakaya Onsen's animation, so I don't know what to say, man. If not Onsen, it has to be someone else from Team Go, because this philosophy of like very low detail for high fluidity is something that someone from Team Go would do. As for the framing, the shot here is very well framed, like that's extremely good perspective drawing and then the way you cut into the shot again the perspective here is just absolutely flawless with the top-down view of a character the shot composition here reminds me very much of the shot from Gosso's Chainsaw Man episode and there it was animated by Hisashi Mori and yeah coming back to the Chozo shot the edge lighting here is just so wonderful I love it neon blue is just the best color for edge lighting also love the hair settle animation here when Choso just raises his head, his hair just settles accordingly. And also look at the compositing and color design here, man. Especially this Yuji cut. 
The compositing here is just so wonderful. It's almost like Shingo Yamashita level. You see this blood blob moving past him, right? And that's glowing. So it's got to cast light because it's glowing. And it is casting a faint red hue on Yuji's face here. And that's like very similar to the Shingo Yamashita does his compositing. I don't know if that's bleed because of the bad bitrate of the video. I hope not. It doesn't look like it. And then immediately we cut to a drawing that has barely any detail again. Just that edge lighting that we saw before. That is a ridiculous number of people to animate. Especially with the foreground characters. Just because there are low detail characters, you can't ignore the characters that have a lot of detail. Like the foreground characters. This guy's afro, for example. That has like very impressive shading. So drawing these many characters all doing their individual poses while also moving separately mid-air that's that's ridiculous that's an incredibly impressive shot really cool bit of fire animation here and hanami has pretty much as much detail as she did in season one i think on her way she also kills a guy yeah she kills a guy that, that's blood spurting here there's literally no feedback in the way she's killing that person because i guess it's just so effortless for her and the cursed energy on the curses is shown with like a purple color with the same inky cursed energy outline whereas for people it is shown in blue color this looks like it's from the episode if we do get the episode full kagenashi on um, jogo here but then there's a layer of light comes in to illuminate him and he's still full kagenashi like he's still completely shadowless it looks very much like a hakyugo correction and yes hakyugo does do animation direction as well he did animation direction for both of his mob episodes as for the animation definitely this cut at the very least is done by ren onodera the way he's animating the fire here with like literally zero outlines is very much like uh, ren onodera it looks like popcorn if that makes sense. This is the same way he animated fire in the Azur Lane episode. That one was directed by Hironori Tanaka. And I'm sure that you can tell the similarities for yourself. Can, I don't know if he worked on Chainsaw Man though. Okay, no, he did not work on uh, Chainsaw Man, which is probably because uh, he's a very idiosyncratic animator, which is why the scenes animated by him end up being a little bit controversial, like his Boruto cut, which despite being a masterclass of character acting, was referred to as bad animation. And again, his Jujutsu Kaisen cut, which was thought to be CGI for some reason. So my current prediction is that Miso is the one who directed this episode which would make this episode of the year maybe fingers crossed i really really hope miso directs an episode because his storyboards are what i consider to like literally be the best the absolute best i put him up there with like gosso for just how incredibly creative and dynamic his storyboards are another extremely strong drawing here man that's so well corrected so this is either tanaka or it could also be yosuke yajima who was the animation director for the arifumi imai episode comparing the line work on like gojo's hands here to nanami's hands they do look quite a bit similar look at this water bubble animation how many layers of shading is that four layers for every individual bubble and there are a lot of bubbles there i don't know what this is that looks like another mecha love the rings of the sonic boom here you have like perfect rings but then because the power fades away the ring also fades away irregularly the animation is just always so satisfying and of course the short composition will never be boring because you always get shots like this thrown in there not a single boring shot so far in the season as a whole and i'm assuming that will continue with shibuya arc next is this is wonderful hanami cut and it's very obviously uh done by kosuke kato it's very prominent kanada style animation and uh that's just the most kanada pose that a Kannada style animator can Kannada. The foreshortening here with the perspective is just absolutely wonderful. And the thick inky lines that a lot of Kannada style animators use, particularly Kosuke Kato also uses. Like look at this Toji cut, for example. With the close-up of Mahito's face, you again get a lot of that inky, cribbly lines. The best thing about Kannada animation is of course just gonna be the Kannada poses. Just look at how he shifts poses. He's upside down here. Next frame. Literally the next frame, he's all the way upright. And the next frame, he's... I really don't know what pose that is. But then again, just continuous shifts in perspectives. Ending with this in-between pose frame. And then switching to the strongest Kannada pose in this cut. And yeah, these kind of in-between drawings where it absolutely does not make sense for the character to look like that is something that we saw with Kato's Toji cut as well. He's never flexed that hard with his drawings, but seems like we're going to be getting more of that. And yeah, of course, people are going to pause this, screenshot this and be like, look at what they did to my baby Mahito. People don't understand that these in-between frames are necessary to actually have good fluid motion there. Especially in Kannada style animation where the number of frames are already so less. So you have lower chances to show that something is moving. So the individual drawings and the poses become far more important. This is the next cut with a Meva scene. This is also very much Kannada style animation. If I had to guess who animated this, I have a pretty good guess that this is Yuto. The same person who animated the mutilation of Gojo Satoru. Because first of all, it is Kannada style. And the timing is very much similar to the timing that Yuto had for Gojo's mutilation as well. And also the shape of the FX animation. The 
these flowy, sharp shapes that go in arcs is very much the kind of uh, FX animation that Yuto used when uh, the cursed weapon goes through infinity and also just throughout his cuts for episode 3. But yeah, the short composition is amazing. EI Jutsu, by the way, will never not be badass. That very much looks like a Kannada light flare as well. It's, it's like a much thicker, meatier Kannada light flare, but a Kannada light flare nevertheless. This cut is also wonderful. Even with limited animation, the shot is still made very much dynamic. That is a camera mastery of Shota Gojizono coming into play. I don't know if Koso is storyboarding this or whatever, but still, it looks amazing. And also the slow animated zoom on the character. Animated zoom as in he's not just being panned forward, he's actually being animated forward. Like, like every frame where he's coming closer to the camera that's a unique drawing the background is also perfectly warped the art direction keeping up with Gosso's chaotic storyboards. And what would be a young animator project without at least one Yuta porn inspired cut thrown in there? This cut is by Dorian Kulon. Dorian is very much a Yuta Kanakamura inspired animator. I remember back when season 5 aired, his cut was shown in the next episode preview and a lot of people thought that Yuta porn was returning. But alas, Yuta porn did not return. But even without Yuta porn's incredible animation, his disciples pretty much carried My Hero Academia anyway. Dorian Kulon, of course, being one of them. Here again, he's animating in just the most classic Yuta porn style. Background animation with jagged smears. These are absolutely the same kind of smears that Utapon uses, combined with, oh look at that, cubic debris. This is like Utapon cubes absolutely perfected. The next cut to the movement is also really cool. I love the way Yuji's going back and forth in the camera, like the camera is catching up to him, but then he just leaps forth again, camera catches up with him again, it's very well done. With of course classic Utapon-esque jagged smears as well, and that of course also comes with impact frames, and I guess that's supposed to transition to the rising cursed energy. This cut is like, I say, the highlight of this uh, PV as a whole. I love the fluid, subtle rotation in ones, combined with beautiful Nakamura style effects animation and the Utapon cubes as well. Just look at the perspective change on the cubes as well. Really gorgeous work by Dorian. He's a French animator, if I'm not mistaken. And then we get this awesome Ushiguro cut. This is like extremely Sungo Park inspired. Down to the way he's drawn. Is that actually Sungo Park? I'm confused now. Is Sungo Park returning as an animator? That would be wonderful. Finally, we get to this cut. I guess it's raining, which is shown by these few lines here. It's very much, again, a low detail drawing that looks kind of unfinished, but it still looks really wonderful. A lot of volume, especially on Yuji's nose right here with the different shading on either side. And then the slow pan close up as well. It's again an animated zoom, not a regular panning zoom. This is just wonderful doga work. The compositing and the shading also reminds me very much of Shu Sugita scene from the second opening. That's not it. Of course, we have a surprise at the end, which is, I'm sorry, Dorian, but this is my favorite cut from the PV. Because my god, it looks incredible. Sudden shift in aspect ratio, which is again something Miso has used in the past for his projects. And also Haki Ugo has used. The shading is also wonderful. It is so easy to count the different layers of shading here because it's so well defined. You can properly see the line work. It's very raw. I always have like a soft spot for this uncomposited raw look. I guess calling this uncomposited is very much wrong because there is a good amount of compositing here, but the FX animation is displayed in like the rawest form. If I compare this to the Genga of this FX animation, I feel like there won't be any change whatsoever. And that is not something you usually get to see, especially in these days. For example, this cut from season 1 episode 4, that is beautiful smoke animation. And what did the compositing team decide to do? Completely blur that shit. And the smoke clearly looks infinitely better in the production materials compared to the final version. But here, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. I also love how the fire is pulsing between like a yellowish color and a reddish deep reddish color i don't know what this is reminding me of Ooh, this reminds me of like uh the fire animation in fog hill of five elements where again the effects animation is very much raw if you like action animation and you haven't watched fog hill of five elements what the fuck are you doing please do check that out it's a chinese production made by a very small team of people who take their sweet time producing every single episode and yeah just has the most incredible piece of action animation that i have probably ever seen that's mostly because of the direction as well because there's no talking the action is in full focus and just two characters going at it. Anyway, that's it, right? Yeah, that's the Jujutsu Kaisen PV scene by scene breakdown. A lot of predictions here. As for uh, the animators, I'm sure about Kaito Tomioka. I'm sure about Kosuke Kato. Pretty sure about Yuto as well. And quite a bit sure about Ren Onodera. I really want to say Nakaya Onsen is also part of the project, but there is a tweet going around that Nakaya Onsen is not part of the project. I tried finding the tweet for myself, so I don't know if it's faked by someone else or if it is true. 
and Onsen is just saying that he did not animate the Sukuna scene at the end. Because as I said before, it also makes sense for this team of freelance animators to work on Fate Strange Fake instead, especially Nakai Onsen who has been closely associated with Fate. And very recently, he also directed the Fate Samurai Remnant opening. He also pretty much solo key animated that with a few still drawings drawn by Haki Hugo because of course they are pretty close friends. I really really do hope that Onsen does work on season 2 because I absolutely love his cuts from both the Shingo Yamashita openings. Miso is pretty much confirmed on the project so that's great. At the end of the day I do wish that these projects did have a better production schedule like not only Jujutsu Kaisen, Page Strange Fake as well and especially with Jujutsu Kaisen and Fairy Rain just inhaling all of the animators in the industry currently. I wonder how Fate Strange Fake is gonna fare. So yeah, that's about it. As for my hype levels go, I am the most hyped for a Miso episode and also like maybe another Goso episode as well because we haven't gotten Goso do action in this season yet at least. And of course, I'm also very much excited for more works by Keichiro Watanabe. Since he's credited as a main animator, I'm sure he's gonna do more works. But for Koki Fujimoto and Tatsuya Yoshihara, they're not credited as main animators. I do still expect them to also work on Jujutsu Kaisen, at least for like a couple of cuts maybe. If you like this video, leave a like. If you did not like this video, leave a dislike, subscribe, share, and comment, spread the love, and yeah, that's about it. Thanks for the views.